Welcome to Module 4, Lesson 1. Let's get started. Today, we will be learning how to understand area as an attribute of plane figures. We are learning this so that we can understand area. We will know that we are successful when we can use pattern blocks to tile given polygons. So, what is area? Area is the amount of space a plane figure takes up. So, what is a plane figure? Well, a plane figure is a flat surface. What is this shape? A triangle. How many sides does a triangle have? Three. How many triangles would it take to complete the rhombus? It would take four triangles to complete the rhombus. Which figure takes up more space? Is it figure A or figure B? It takes four triangles to cover each figure. The figures take up the same amount of space. One, two, three, four triangles, one, two, three, four triangles. They're just arranged differently. The figures take up the same amount of space, so they have the same area. What is this shape? A square. How many sides does it have? A square has four equal sides. How many squares would it take to complete the rectangle? It would take six squares to complete the rectangle. One, two, three, four, five, six. The six squares are all equal in size. Each square is one square unit. There are no gaps and no overlaps. The area of the rectangle is six square units. If there were gaps, there would be spaces in between the squares. This would be a gap. If there were overlaps, the squares would be on top of each other, like so. Now it's time for your read, draw, write question. Each tile is a square unit. Do both rectangles have the same area? Explain how you know. You can pause the video here. Do your very best to find the answer and then look in the description box below to compare your answer to the correct answer. 
will see you in the next lesson. Welcome to Module 4, Lesson 2. Today, we will be learning how to decompose and recompose shapes to compare areas. We are learning this so that we can understand area and use it in real-life situations. We'll know that we're successful today when we can use square units to make arrays. Do you remember what a square unit is? A square unit is a unit of area. Examples would be one square inch, one square meter, one square mile, one square centimeter, and so on. Also remember that the squares cannot have gaps or overlap. Look at the strip, the blue strip, and look at the ruler. How long is the strip? The strip is 12 inches long. We can use the ruler to find out how wide is the strip. The strip is one inch wide. I've marked off 12 equal units. That means that I've made a mark at each one inch mark. So on the ruler, I went to one inch and made a line, two inches and made a line, three inches and made a line, and so on until I've got 12 equal units of one inch each. What is the area of one unit? Remember that the strip is one inch wide and each square is one inch long. So we can say that one unit, that's one unit, is one inch by one inch or one square inch. There are 12 units in the whole strip. So what is the area of the whole strip? We would say that the area is 12 square units or 12 square inches because we know that we are measuring in inches. You can see by this line in the middle that I've cut the strip into two equal strips. And then I placed one strip on top of the other. So I started with a 12 inch strip, cut it into two strips, and then I stacked the two strips on top of one another. So there are two strips here. One is one inch by six inches. The other is one inch by six inches. They're equal strips. So do these two strips together have the same area as one long strip? Of course, because they both have 12 square inches. Look at the ruler. 
How long is the purple strip? In this case, it's 12 centimeters long because we're looking at the centimeter side of the ruler. How wide is the purple strip? It's one centimeter. I know this because I found the tick mark where the top of the strip is, it lines up with the one centimeter strip. Tick mark. So I know that it's one centimeter wide. Okay, as you can see, I've marked off 12 equal units. I used one centimeter as a unit, and I've got 12 equal centimeters. So what is the area of one unit? Remember, the strip is one centimeter wide and one unit is one centimeter long. So each unit is one square centimeter. Each unit, this is a unit, is one square centimeter. So there are 12 units in the whole strip, and the area of the whole strip would be 12 square centimeters. So let's compare the blue strip to the purple strip. How are the figures alike? They both have 12 square units. How are the figures different? The units of measure are different. The blue strip is in inches. So we can say it has an area of 12 square inches. And the purple strip is in centimeters, so we can say it has an area of 12 square centimeters. So do the figures have the same area? No, they do not, because they do not take up the same amount of space. 12 square inches is not equal to 12 square centimeters. Now it's time for the redraw right question. We're going to read the question together and pick out the most important information. Then you will draw a picture to help you solve the problem and write your answer as a sentence. After we read the question, you can solve, you can pause the video and then do your work when you're finished, you can look in the description box below and find the correct answer to compare to your own. Jess draws a rectangle with an area of 10 square feet. Angel draws a rectangle with an area of 10 square inches. Do the two rectangles have the same area? Why or why not? So Jess's rectangle is 10 square feet. Angel's rectangle is 10 square inches. Okay, do your very best work and I'll see you in the next lesson. Welcome to module four, lesson three. Today, we will be learning how to model tiling with centimeter and inch unit squares as a strategy to measure area. We are learning this so that we can understand area. 
and we'll know that we're successful when we can use tiles to determine the area of a rectangle. What is tiling? To tile, or tiling, is to cover a region without gaps or overlaps. Remember, there should be no gaps and no overlaps. So which of these sets of squares are tiled? Let's look at set A. I notice it has gaps. And to be tiled, it must have no gaps and no overlaps. So set A is not tiled. Set B seems to be showing all of each square with no gaps or overlaps. So I'm thinking maybe it's set B. But first, let's look at set C. Okay, so I'm noticing that all of the squares are not completely showing. It looks like they're overlapped, so it's not set C. Yes, it's set B because the units are tight together but have no overlaps. How many square units do you see in each set? Yes, both sets have six square units. One square has an area of one square centimeter. So what is the area of each of these figures? To find the area, we would count the number of squares. So this figure has six squares. So we can say that it has six square centimeters. This figure has one, two, three, four, five, six squares. So it too has six square centimeters. One square has an area of one square centimeters. What is the area of the figure now? Well, it looks like one square was taken out. So now there are one, two, three, four, five squares. So what is the area? Yes, the area would be five square centimeters. In this figure, one square has an area of one square inch. What is the area of the figure? Answer, six square inches. What is the area of the figure now? There are one, two, three, four square units, and each square unit is one square inch. What is the area? Four square inches. Okay, it's time for your redraw right question. Each tile is a square unit. Write the area of rectangle A then draw a different rectangle with the same area. Do your very best work, then look in the description box below to compare your answer to the correct answer. And we'll see you in the next lesson. 
Welcome to Module 4, Lesson 4. Today we will be learning how to relate side lengths with the number of tiles on a side. We're learning this so that we can understand area and use it in real life situations. And we'll know that we're successful when we can relate total area with multiplication of side lengths. In this figure, one square has an area of one square inch. How many tiles are on side A? So this is side A, and it has one, two, three, four, five tiles. So what is the length of side A? Well, we know that each square is one inch long by one inch wide. So there's one, two, three, four, five inches. How many tiles on side B? One, two, three tiles. What is the length of side B? Remember that each square is one inch long by one inch wide. If there are three tiles, then the side would be three inches long. So, what is the area of the figure? There are a couple of ways that we can find the answer to this question. The area is 15 square inches because there are 15 tiles in all. And I can find that answer by multiplying side A times side B. Remember that side A is 5 and side B is 3. And I know that 5 times 3 equals 15. That's one way. Another way that I can find the answer is by counting the tiles. There's five, 10, 15 tiles. So that would be 15 square inches. Ken thinks that both of these figures have the same area. Is he correct? Yes, he is correct because in this figure, we know that this side is three inches and that side is five inches and three times five equals 15. In this figure, we can count the tiles five, 10, 15 tiles, and each tile is one inch. So again, the area is 15 square inches. Crystal thinks that both of these figures have the same area. Is she correct? Yes, she is correct because three times three, three times three equals nine. And there are three, six, nine tiles here. And both are being measured in inches. So they're both nine square inches.
Okay, it's time for your redraw right question. We're going to read the question together, and then you will draw a picture to help you solve the problem and write the answer as a sentence. After I read the question, you can pause the video, do your work, and then compare your answer to the correct answer in the description box below. So the redraw right question is, label the side lengths, then find the total area. Each square, each square is one centimeter. You can pause the video now and do your work, and I'll see you in the next video. Welcome to Module 4, Lesson 5. In today's lesson, we will be learning how to form rectangles by tiling with unit squares to make arrays. We are learning this so that we can understand how to measure area. And we'll know that we're successful today when we are successful when we can build rectangles using unit square tiles. One of the green squares has an area of one square inch. How many squares in all are needed to fill the rectangle? Notice that this side is six inches long, so we would need six squares to fill this side. And this side is two inches long, so we would need two squares to fill this side. So how many squares in all would need be needed to fill the rectangle? The answer is 12. Six squares for the top and six squares for the bottom equals 12. Let's write a multiplication equation to find the area instead. There are two rows with six in each row, so we would say two times six and there are 12 in all, so 2 times 6 equals 12, and the area is 12 square inches. Write a multiplication equation to find the area of this figure. Well, we know that the first factor is 3 because there are 3 rows. What is the other factor going to be? We can find out by counting the squares along this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this unknown number would be a seven. Answer, three times seven equals 21. And the area is 21 square inches. The area of this figure is 24 square inches. So what is the missing side length? So the equation would be 6 times 4 equals 24. The missing side length is 4 because there are 1 oops because there are 1 2 3 4 squares so that would be a 4 and there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 squares on this side so we can say 4 times 6 or 6 times 4 equals 24 The area of this figure is 30 square inches. What is the missing side length? 10 
times the unknown equals 30. We can count by tens to find our answer. 10, 20, 30. So 10 times 3 equals 30. That means our missing side length must be a 3. The missing side length is 3 inches because 10 times 30 equals 30. Now it's time for the redraw right question. Christy has 10 tiles. Each tile is one square meter. She puts them in two equal rows. Draw Christy's rectangles and find the area. So she has 10 tiles in all, and each tile is one square meter. She puts the tiles in two equal rows. You will go now and draw Christy's rectangles and find the area. You can pause the video, do your work, and then compare your answer to the answer in the description box below. Do your very best, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Welcome to Module 4, Lesson 6. Today we will be learning how to draw rows and columns to determine the area of a rectangle given an incomplete array. We are learning this so that we can measure area. And to be successful, you will be able to find the array of an incomplete the area of an incomplete array. Please be sure to stay to the end for your redraw write, write practice question. Let's get started. Part of the rectangle is shaded. We can use the shaded parts to estimate the area of the unshaded part. The blue parts are shaded and the white part is not shaded. Imagine we drew the line up from the second row. How many square units in the unshaded part of the rectangle? There are two square units in the unshaded part. The rows in the array are equal. How many square units are in row 2? Notice that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 square units in the shaded row. And the rows are equal. So how many are in row 2? 6 square units. In this array, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 squares in row 1. If we extend the line all the way down and this line all the way across, we can see that there are 5 square units in row 2. How many are in row 3 then? Here's your hint. The rows are equal. Yes, the answer is 5 square units. There are 5 square units in every row because they're equal. How many square units are there in all in the figure?
we said there are five square units in row one, five square units in row two, and five square units in row three. So there are five, 10, 15 square units. Five times three equals 15. How many square units are in this figure? To find the answer, we could imagine that the lines are extended all the way down and all the way across. There are 16 square units. We know that the rows are equal and we can see that there are four units in row one and four times four equals 16. Here's your read, draw, write question. You're going to read the question with me. Then you'll go and find the answer on your own. You can pause the video when I'm done reading. After you've done your very best work to find the answer, you can look in the description box below and compare your answer to the correct answer. Bruce's table sits on a tiled floor as shown. How many square tiles are on the floor, including the tiles under the table? I'm going to give you a hint. You want to look at the lines and in your mind or on a piece of paper, extend them all the way down and all the way across. Okay, go ahead and pause the video now. Do your very best work and I'll see you in the next lesson. Welcome to Module 4, Lesson 7. Today we'll be learning how to interpret area models to form rectangular arrays. We're learning this so that we can measure area in real life situations. And we'll know that we're successful when we can draw an area model and find the total number of squares. Make sure you stay to the end of the video so that you can get your read, draw, write practice question. Let's get started. So first of all, what is an area model? An area model relates rectangular arrays to area. Let's draw an array with 24 squares using rows of six. There's one row for six square units, 12, 18, 24. This array has 24 square units. One square unit equals one centimeter. What are the side lengths of the array? To find the side lengths, we'd have to first count the units. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six square units on this side, or six centimeters, and four centimeters on this side. So then what is the area of the array? Remember, to find the area, we can multiply the sides, the length times the width, or we can count the tiles. The area of this array is 24 square centimeters because six times, 24, six times four equals 24. Is the area of figure A equal to the area of figure B?
Well, we know that the area of figure A would be 18 square centimeters because 6 times 3 equals 18. What about figure B? There are 1, 2, 3 centimeters on this side and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 centimeters on this side. So 3 times 6 equals 18 square centimeters. Is the area of figure A equal to the area of figure B? Yes, it is, because both arrays have an area of 18 square centimeters. The empty rectangle without the grid lines is called an area model. I'll say that again. The empty rectangle without the grid lines is called an area model. What is the area of the area model? Well, we can find out by multiplying the length times the width. So. 3 centimeters times 6 centimeters equals 18 centimeters square. So the area would be 18 square centimeters. What is the area of this area model? 1 times 18 1 times any number is the number, so 1 times 18 equals 18 square centimeters. The area of the area model is 18 square centimeters because 18 times 1 equals 18. Let's use the grid to help us find the area of the yellow figure. So remember when the lines are covered up, you can use your imagine or you can use your, pen your pencil, your imagination or your pencil to extend the grid lines. By doing that, we can see that we have one, two square units on the top. And going down the side, we have one, two, three, four square units. Going down the side. So then we can find the area of two times four. What is the area of the yellow figure? Yes, the area of the yellow figure is 8 square units because 2 times 4 equals 8. Now it's time for your redraw right question. We're going to read the question together and then you'll find the answer on your own. When you think you have the answer, you can look in the description box below and compare your answer to the correct answer. Use the grid to find the side lengths of rectangle A, then find the total area of rectangle A. Pause the video now and do your very best work. I'll see you in the next lesson. Welcome to Module 4, Lesson 8. Today we will be learning how to find the area of a rectangle through multiplication of the side lengths. We are learning this so that we can measure area and we'll know that we're successful today when we can use multiplication or division to find the unknown side length. Be sure to stay till the very end of the video where you'll get to do a practice redraw right question. Let's get started. 
How many rows are in the incomplete array? Yes, there are four rows. One, two, three, four. Remember, rows are horizontal. They go from left to right or right to left. They're sideways. So there are four rows. How many square units are in each row? Well, remember in an array, the rows are equal. So we know that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares in the first row. That means there are seven squares in every row. So that means there are seven square units in each row. We can skip count by seven to find the area of the rectangle. Seven, 14, 21, 28. Four times seven is 28. The area of the rectangle is 28 square units because seven times four equals 28. This rectangle has no grid. We can multiply the side lengths to find its area. Let's count by 6 to find the product of 6 times 8. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48. 8 times 6 is 48. The area of the rectangle is 48 square units because 6 times 8 equals 48. The area of this rectangle is 27 square centimeters. What is the unknown side length? So we see that there are three centimeters on this side, so the first factor is a three. We know from the question that the total area is 27 square centimeters, so that's why the product is 27. So what number can we multiply by three to get 27? That would tell us the side length on the top. Let's count by three to find the unknown side length. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. Okay, we're gonna stop right there because we've reached 27. How many times did we count by three? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times three. So we can say that three times nine equals 27. And there you have the answer to the unknown side length. The side length is nine centimeters because three times nine equals 27. Now it's time for your read, draw, write practice question. We're going to read the question together, and then you're going to pause the video and find the answer on your own. When you're certain of your answer, you can look in the description box below to compare your answer to the correct answer. Grayson draws a rectangle with a side length of four inches and an area of 20 square inches. What is the other side length? How do you know? Okay, do your very best work and I'll see you in the next lesson.